Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. 2016 marked a long and violent year in the life of the city of Chicago. 3,550 shootings, 762 murders. That's an average of more than two killings every single day. And it's getting worse. This year's death toll marked a 57% increase over the year before. So what is going on in Chicago? Well, to many politicians and activists, the answer is obvious. There are too many guns and not enough restrictions on those guns. But wait, Chicago already has some of the strictest gun control laws in the country, and those laws have not gotten any looser. Could it be that the left's central assumption about crime control is wrong? Joining us now is Joshua Horwitz, he's executive director of the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Joshua, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate so, it. So if you look at the numbers, and I have, there doesn't seem to be any direct correlation between gun ownership and acts of violence. So more Americans own guns than they did 20 years ago, a lot more. And the hom there are far more guns per person in America than there were 20 years ago. And the homicide rate has dropped dramatically. If gun control is the answer, how can that be right? Well, I think we've got to ch talk about some of the assumptions uh, that you made. First of all, uh, gun ownership across the board is not up. Gun ownership concentrated in less individuals is, as you mentioned, owning more and more guns. But here's what's interesting. I think in the last, you know, in the last couple of years, you've seen some of the results of our guns everywhere policy in a number of different states, and we're seeing the murder rate and the gun homicide rate go up uh, 14 to 15, and of course 15 to 16, we don't have the final numbers, but, you, but we can imagine that gun violence is in fact now going up. So I think you, we have to sort of look at that and say, you know, what's going on in the United States? Have we loosened gun laws too much? Where are we with that? And I think, as we've discussed, I mean, I really believe gun ownership per se has, a, has an effect on the suicide rate, but I think that on the homicide rate, you have a much more complex picture. Well, then, but wait. I mean, I've been told since I was a child that the reason there are so many murders in places like Detroit and Chicago is because there are not enough gun laws or they're going across state lines to buy guns. If that's true, if more guns concentrated results in more killings, then why do the states with the lax, the loosest gun laws have the lowest murder rates, which is true. Well, New that's, Hampshire, Vermont, Wyoming, so Maine, that's, so, Idaho. So that's not true. I mean, so there are some states that have loose gun laws that have low murder rates, but there are also some states, for instance, Louisiana, um, Arizona, South Carolina, uh, South Carolina with, with, with very lax gun laws and very high homicide rates. But the highest, and but look, I'm not arguing that there's yeah. a direct correlation between loose gun laws and low murder rates. Right. I'm merely arguing that gun control doesn't make us safer. That's pretty obvious based on the numbers. So well, why are you still well, running a gun control? Right, program? okay, so let me say, just give you an example. There's a really interesting study out of Missouri recently. Okay, so Missouri gets rid of their gun violence prevention laws, right, so that they have a permit to purchase law and they have some concealed carry restrictions. Those are all gone. And their, and their homicide rate, goes, their gun homicide rate goes up 25%. So the evidence is getting closer and closer. I mean, I mean we, we really believe the evidence is showing that, in fact, not, you know, a, a, a group of gun violence prevention laws, in fact, do lower the homicide rate. Really? And we certainly... Like, what... Okay, so Chicago, 3,500 shootings last year, right. 762 murders. What gun laws would have prevented that? So Illinois has okay gun laws, okay? So they don't have the best, they don't have the worst. But what they do have is most of their, 60% of their guns that end up in crime come from other states. And those other states, of course, think about Wisconsin, Mississippi, Indiana leads the way there, right? So those guns are coming in from those states with weak gun laws. And they're going across borders, and they're ending up in crime in Chicago. So what we really need to do is to make sure that the evidence-based laws that we think work, background checks, etc., Th that we have them on a national basis because Illinois is in a very... No, but hold on. I've heard, just heard this argument, but so New but, York City has seen a dramatic drop in gun crime, right? Right, and they have great gun laws. And it's right south of Vermont, which has the well, laxest gun laws well, in America. You could get in a car and drive up there. So why isn't right, that the same? Very, oh, well, because first of all, New York, it, New York, first of all, it's the same thing as Illinois that the, where, the, where the crime guns are coming from out of state, but... New York lives in a much safer neighborhood, right? So that you have to go quite some distance to get a firearm. You just can't go... Really? Oh, yeah. Because, so, like, everyone I know in New York has a weekend home in Vermont. Look, the point right, is, but, this stuff doesn't work, and yeah, you well, know it doesn't no, work. Well, I think the evidence shows that it works, and that's important. Then why isn't it working in Chicago? I mean, really, is the real reason it's all well, the fault of Indiana? No, no, I mean, well, let really? Me you, let me ask you a question. Do you think we'd be better off in Chicago with more firearms? It depends. In the hands of, of whom? Right. I would be better off in Chicago with a firearm, right. and yet it's almost impossible for me to get one well, in Chicago. Why?
The, the, because the laws are so... Oh, there are no gun stores in Chicago. Oh, the, the laws I have to are, what if you know, I have to register it as if I'm no, no, a criminal? No, actually not. Uh, Illinois does not have registration. Illinois has license. The city of Chicago does. Uh, yes, Il it does. Il you have to buy a license to have a gun. Illinois has, Illinois has um, a, a license. And what you do is you get a license. Actually, it goes for 10 years. And so I have to ask permission of the authorities. I'm, look, but, the only point is, you're, for example, I go onto your website and you yeah. say one of the big problems is assault rifles. So of the 762 murders in Chicago, how many were committed with assault rifles? Well, I don't know that actually that's from my website, but let me tell you. Well, about, yeah, it is. Let, I actually let, have it so, right here. Let, so let me explain to you about assault weapons. Ass assault weapons make killing more lethal, okay? So what, what, what we have in that, that situation is assault weapons are have more deaths per shooting. They don't necessarily cause more shootings, but when you use an assault weapon in, in a crime, you end up with more people dead and but, more Okay, so fired. in Chicago, there's 762 murders last year. How many were committed with so-called assault weapons? Right, but you know what? That's, that's a small issue. Well, what's the answer? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, but you the, run a gun control group. I well, mean, and you're pushing you, for right here, semi-automatic, military-style firearms designed for one person to, to kill people. Right. So we have the city with one of the highest murder rates in the country, right. and how many were committed right, with but, assault weapons? But I think the bigger question is how many guns were trafficked without background checks? That's what I spend my day working on. I want to figure out how do we prevent guns from being trafficked. And let me give you another example. We have a terribly weak federally anti-trafficking law right now. And one of the biggest issues, that, and I'm sure you agree with me, and this is a bipartisan issue, if you are trafficking firearms, there should be a, a, a real penalty for it, and, you should, and there should be federal deterrence. We don't have that in this country, and that's why a number of Republicans and... You know, you and, haven't sold me. You haven't I'm explained not, I'm, I'm, why I'm, I'm, a state like Vermont or Maine or Idaho or Wyoming right. where, or Texas, where I can right. buy ammunition at a gas station... Right have such low murder I'll rates. I'll tell you what, because their crime rate's low. So here's but the, why are the crime... I mean, so no, in other no, words, no, there's no, no direct correlation. This is the only point I'm making. Yeah. I realize this is a complex question. It is very complex. But so gun control that. is held up by the left as something we could do, we just don't have the will because the evil NRA is stopping us. And the truth is, there are more guns than people in America. If we passed every single law you wanted, do you really think that the murder rate in Chicago would drop? Yes, I absolutely do. You really do? I do, because, I, because the states where that are supplying guns to Chicago would, would be forced to do background checks. We'd had a trafficking law. It would make and it so much criminals, more... many of these oh, no. guns come from oh. theft, as you know, or they're, they're mm -hmm. sold between people who sure. don't obey the law. So these people are, by definition, beyond the reach of the law. A little naive to believe that they're going to obey these laws. Oh, now. yeah, yeah. I'm not, it's, not, it's not that. It's on the law-abiding gun owner, right? Here's the thing. Right now, you can transfer a firearm completely above board. You know, you can go on, sell it on on an internet site or whatever, to someone without doing a background check. That person may be a criminal, may not be, but here's the thing. We want to make sure that the law-abiding gun owner is not transferring into the criminal market. It, the the, the law-abiding gun owner is going to do, it, it will do the right thing, but it's really, it's really the issue of how do we not transfer guns Well, into what if the law-abiding gun owner wants to own what you call a military-style assault weapon? Yeah. Okay. Why can't he do that? And second, what is a military-style assault weapon? So uh, let me give you the definition first. So it's a centerfire rifle, right? Okay, with a detachable magazine. Uh -huh. Okay, so above a 22 caliber, okay. centerfire, detachable, right. with a grip below the stock and something on the front to hold it. So those are the definitions of assault weapon. Well, that's not so different from my 30 out six. It, a well, deer rifle. So it, why? It, it, it is different. Do you do you have a thumb hole stock on that and a and a, a detachable magazine and a, yeah, it's got a detachable magazine. And, but does it have all the other items? Now, let me tell you why. Who cares have, what the stock is like? Sure, I mean, no, this no, suggests no, you no, don't know much no, about guns. No, I think to it me. really matters, and I think maybe you haven't shot. Have you shot an AR-15? Yeah, I own one. Okay, great. So what's what's important about an AR-15? Important about an AR-15 is you can keep your barrel. And you probably can do this. Your muzzle on the target, round after round after round. You don't have to reload. It's meant to kill people. So here's what I, I think we should do. If you own one, I, I think we treat them the same way we treat machine guns. And people, the NRA says all the time, machine guns don't cause any crime. Okay. I believe, and, and this is a bill introduced by Representative Ciceline from Rhode Island, that we should treat them just like any other class three weapon and have the same but procedure. But it's a distinction without a difference. Let me just ask you one final question. Yeah. What round do you think is deadlier? The two two three that fires yeah. from the military style assault sure. weapon or the 30 out six or the 30 30 conventional well, I, I deer, know right? I know which one's more, I mean I know which has more power so the 30 30 obviously has more power but 223 goes at a higher velocity okay, okay. 
It, no, it's serious, and it's, and it's meant to be anti-personnel, and you can put lots of them in the cartridge at the same time. Yeah. 223 is an anti-personnel round. I'm not going to argue with you. Rifle rounds are powerful, too. Yeah. Configure them the way an assault weapon, and you'd create something that's much more lethal. The data don't show that at all. But it's nice to have you on. Thank you for your game defense. I, I hope I get back someday. Nice to see you. All right.